Hey guys, do you know something different? It's a different camera angle. For years, I have been struggling trying to find an arm, camera arm, something that would position the camera the right way and the struggle. But I think I have a solution. It is like Frankenstein of camera arms. It's like two or three different camera arms connected together. I don't know if it's gonna work, but as long as it continues to work like this, I think it's awesome. So the topic of this video is a watercoloring, a watercolor project. Last week I did a fundraiser for my local animal shelter where I did a watercolor workshop and we did several different projects there. And one of the ones that was, I didn't think it would be as fun as it was, but it turned out super fun, feather bookmark. This little guy is so fun to create, whether you're a seasoned watercolorist or brand new beginner, this is a fun project. I'm gonna show you how easy this is to do, and then I'll do a couple more feathers for you to see how they all turn out. A Couple of different things you'll need is one watercolor paper, and I would suggest to get a nice brand of watercolor. I use Canson watercolor paper. It's fairly inexpensive in the realm of watercolor paper. So I'm using a nine by 12 size. Cut it up into the little strips that I wanted. I think I did a six by two for most of my bookmarks. So I got 12 bookmarks. 12 bookmarks on one piece of paper. The next item you will need to make this project is your watercolor paints themselves. People often ask me what brand of watercolor paint do I use or recommend? And I don't, I'm not brand specific. I have actually quite the conglomeration of different brands out there. If you want to see some, some of the videos where I talk about those, I will leave those linked at the end of this video. You can check it out. If you're brand new to watercolor and don't want to invest a lot of money into watercolor paints, I highly recommend the Prang watercolor set. It gives you a nice vibrant color at an affordable price. After you have the watercolor paper and your watercolor paint, you'll need brushes, which I use a nice round tip brush. Something like this, which is a round, I think this is a 11 size paint brush. Works great. The last tool that you're going to absolutely need, of course, is water. So you want a clean source of water that you're not going to get confused with your drinking water and drink out of. So now let's jump into the actual painting process. To fully get watercolor, you have to understand how watercolor works. So watercolor is painting with tinted colored water. Whereas if you use acrylic paint or oil paint, you're painting with an actual consistency of paint. This one you are tinting the water and painting with that. The more tint or pigment from the paint that you put into the water, the deeper and more vibrant your color is going to get. You can also get darker colors by layering those up, putting a one layer of paint across, letting that dry, and then going back and adding more and more and more to get the vibrant color that you're looking for. Wherever water goes, the paint is going to go. So if you have a puddle of blue and you put a puddle of yellow next to it and those two puddles meet, they are going to mix and mingle and you're going to get strands of green going throughout everything because, you know, blue and yellow make green. But for this project, we want the colors to play and mingle all they want. So the first step is to completely wet down your bookmark from top to bottom. Just soak that thing down. One thing you're going to notice is that you may experience a buckling or bowing of your paper. This happens because watercolor paper it is a compressed paper. So when water gets into it, it kind of fluffs the paper up. Think of it like a dry sponge. When you get a brand new dry sponge and you put a little bit of water, it goes whoof. That's what's happening with your watercolor paper. There are a few things you can do to help with this. One is before you even start watercoloring, you can tape the edges down with painter's tape. That kind of holds your paper down flat against work surface. Second thing is, is you can pre-stretch, I think is what it's called, your watercolor paper. It's a whole process. Not gonna go into it here. I rarely do it because it's a whole process. The last thing is you can just work with it, which is what I'm going to do in this part. It's gonna buckle, it's gonna bow. You can either use your finger to hold it down or the back side of a paintbrush to kind of hold it down while you're painting if you don't want it to be warping and bubbling. Bubbling? Bubbling's not a word. After it dries, you might find that your paintings are still a little bit wonky, but what I do is press them underneath a book for a couple of days and that usually treats them and they come out relatively flat. Not perfect, but relatively. Once you have your bookmark completely covered with water, then you're going to begin to apply the paint. Where and how much paint you apply to your bookmark is completely up to you. This is what makes it so much fun because you really get to see what your paint does. How much water is on your, your bookmark will determine how much your paint plays or travels across your paper. So it's great to begin learning how your 
paint reacts. If you put these two colors together, what color are you going to get? These three colors, if you swipe through this, what's going to happen? This really helps you get to know your paint. And I think it's an exercise that every watercolor artist should do, especially if you get a new brand of watercolor paper or paint and you're not certain, because not all paper and paint is the same. Some work with higher pigmentation, some have more fillers in them, so they're gonna respond differently. So this is a great way to get to know your product. I'm going to do several of these feathers so you can see how each one I used different color combinations and different techniques and had fun. One I just kind of speckled paint on. The paint actually speckled on several of them so you want to you know keep it under control. <laughs> paint where you want it, you need to let the bookmarks dry. You can either let them dry naturally, giving them an hour to two hours to a day, depending on how much water and how fast things dry, or you can be impatient like me and use a blow dryer. Note, if you use a blow dryer, the pressure from the air blowing onto your paint is going to move things around even more. So if you really like where the things are and you don't want it to move around as much, definitely don't use the blow dryer technique. But if you're like, hey, I don't care if things play around a little bit more, and it does create a fun softening technique. So that's fun to figure out as well. But blow dryers can work nicely. But after it is dry, we're gonna cut out the feather shape. So the feather shape itself has a little bit of a stem where the little feather, hard feathery part, I don't know my bird technology, quill. It's the quill. So the feather shape has this pointy part where there's the quill of the feather. And then from there, it's like a really long, flat, lemony shape. And again, this is completely up to your interpretation of how you want your feathers to look. What I did was a Google search for feather silhouettes. They gave me a lot of different shapes and designs to look for, but it can be as simple or as complex as you want. You also may notice that I cut in little tiny slivers, like little V shapes, just for the splits in the feather. I think that looks kind of cool. You can do that if you want to, or totally just leave it a solid shape. And there we go, we have our feathers. These are just the ones that I did today. These are so much fun as gifts. You could make, of course, bookmarks, name tags. I'll put them on top of gifts as like gift tags. There's all sorts of fun things. And because it's super easy and there's not a lot of things you can do that, to make it go wrong, it's a great one to do at parties for, you can have like a little art party and have people make fun feathers. Now on these ones, I didn't add any extra detailing, but if you wanted to, you could go back through after it's completely dry and add in a little bit more feather detail. Totally up to you. So there we go, one of the projects that I taught at my watercolor workshop. If you'd like to see the other watercolor workshop projects that I did, let me know in the comment section below, or if there's something in particular that you'd like to see, how do you do this? Let me know in the comments, and if I know how to do it, I might make a video about it. If you're brand new to this channel, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. So until next time, God bless you guys and we'll see you in the next art video. Bye-bye.